Sea Aquarium Singapore Part 1. Open Ocean In just five minutes, we'll be having a short marine chess session where you'll be learning about some of the marine animals here in the open ocean habitat, as well as some of the feeding methods that we provide them with. So, if you're interested, do stick around and I'll see you real soon. Thank you. Ways are very unique. Just like us human beings, we are also very unique. How? Our fingerprints. We have all got different fingerprints, right? So just like men's race, their fingerprints and body patterns are their fingerprint, which means there is not one men's array that has got the same pattern or body color. Now another marine animal that I'd like to introduce to everyone. Now this marine animal is my personal favorite. Now you can, you may have seen it, you may have noticed it soon across the panel, or you can find it along the ocean uh, bottom of the open ocean habitat itself. Now this marine animal has got certain white spots on its back, and it's got a very sharp, pointy nose, and it swims exactly the same as that of the manta rays. Now that marine animal is what we call the white spotted eagle ray. So let me see if I can find one over here. Don't worry, it's not these ones here. These are your cow nose rays. Okay, the white spotted eagle ray is really, really beautiful. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, me. Oh, there you go. Okay, so this one in front here on your right hand side. Okay, that's the white spotted eagle ray over there. Now, if you pay attention to the spots on their backs, right, across all the spotted eagle rays that we have here, it actually differs across. That's because those patterns on their backs are also their fingerprint. Okay, so that's how marine biologists used to identify these kind of species when they tag them. Now, another marine animal that I'd like to introduce to everyone here. Now, this marine animal is a bottom-dwelling marine life. What do you mean by that? Well, bottom-dwelling marine animals like your honeycomb ray and your black box ray beside me here. Ashley, please. Come on down. Come on down. Now, round of applause for the lady here, please. Come on, round of applause for her. Thank you very much. All right, here you go, here you go. No worries. Okay. So the ladies, right, you call a group of fish a school of fish. So, like your snub nose pompanos here, your bat fish, and in fact the silver trubelis, right, they are all examples of schooling fish. There are a couple of reasons why fish actually school together. The first reason is for protection. Now, we all know that the ocean is big. When a fish swims alone, like the silver trubelis here, when it swims alone, it's quite 
it is, it is more vulnerable and prone to predation, right? But when they come together, they are receiving the eyes of the predator. Because the predator will be looking at a huge marine animal, where in fact, the are all just tiny little fishes gathering together. Alright, so number one, protection. Number two, is to find a partner or a mate a lot easily. Now, as I mentioned, the ocean is big. When a fish swims alone, you get lonely, it's hard for them to find a partner. But coming together increases the chance, which means it also encourages reproduction. And the last reason is interesting. The last reason is to reduce water resistance. Now we all know that when we swim in swimming pools or in the sea itself, we require a lot of energy, yes? Well, just like marine animals, they do feel a lot of water resistance. But coming together, I'm not saying that there's no water resistance, there will still be water resistance, but coming together reduces the jet force, which means it requires them to use lesser energy to swim through the water, thus encouraging them to travel a longer distance. Alright, so that's our common reasons why they actually swim together. So, how do we feed them then? Well, the last feeding method is what we call broadcast feeding or surface feeding. For those of you who got fish tanks at home, what do you think of fish as you scatter the pellets on top, right? But the same concept here, just on a larger scale. In the middle and across the open ocean habitat, you actually have a bridge. Now that bridge stands near forest again with a bucket filled with food. After which he scatters all the food across the surface of the open ocean habitat. And your fish is like the silver trunk you know, in the Okay. 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 In the stomach. But it wasn't just the plastics that were found in the stomach, it's baby, it's juvenile, it was also found in the stomach. Alright, so these are real facts. This is something that we need to be aware, something that we need to start conserving, something, something that we need to actually start uh, practicing by saying no to single use plastic materials. Now, another simple example would be your sea turtles. Now, for those of you who love sea turtles, then you know that sea turtles love sea jellies. But because of sea turtles, okay, they look like sea jellies, the sea turtles, right? And the sea turtles cannot tell the difference between what is food and what is not food. So, he accidentally consumes the plastic bag. Now, after consuming the plastic bag, the sea turtle will actually think that it is food food, but the actual bag is something itself to them. Alright? So let us be aware of such incidents, let us be more understanding and more, uh, more Come on, you're trying to be true now. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.